Hello, what's up? I'm Ines Lea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today, today I'll be showing you how to create this awesome slideshow. In the spirit of Graphics Talks hashtag creator to creator initiative, here's what I made with my Graphics Talk subscription. Alright, so as you can see in the slideshow, I use some images from graphicstocks.com, which is also today's video sponsor. If you like what you just saw, click the link in the description box below to get a 7-day free trial to graphicstocks.com and get access to unlimited downloads of 350,000 graphics, photos, vectors and much more. <laughs> this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy this project file with the link in the description and it also includes a tutorial on how to use it. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and let's take a look on how to create this awesome slideshow. So right here I have a folder with images that I found on Graphic Stock. As you can see right here, these are the images that I will be using for uh, this preview tutorial. And then I have a glass texture right here, uh, which I will also be using. You can just Google glass texture or whatever and just take some kind of similar texture online and then you'll be able to use that. Just make sure it's black and white and just like so. Okay, so I'll create a new composition right here, make it full HD, rename it to main comp and I'll make it 10 seconds long right here and click OK. Once you're in here, I will go to images and I will drag in one of the images that I would like to use. So I will drag in this one for example, I will press S on the keyboard and just scale it down until it fits my composition like so. Then I'll go to layer, pre-compose it and I'm going to move all the attributes of this image into a new composition. I'll just rename this image 01 for example. Okay, so now I have a composition with the same dimensions as my original uh, layer. So now you can jump in here and just modify the image if you want to. So that's why I've done that. Okay, so once you have that, I will right click new and create a new camera as well. I'll click OK and right click again or click OK first, right click again, new and create a new null object. I'm going to rename that null object to be the camera control and we're going to use that null object to control our camera. So I'll bind my camera to the control right here. If you don't see that uh, pick whip tool right here, just toggle the switches, click on this button right here until you see it and then just drag the camera on top of the layer uh, of the null layer right here. So now it's combined as you can see right here. So now if I'll make this a 3D layer, uh, the ca uh, camera control, if we press P on the keyboard, we can move our camera like so, but as there are no 3D objects in our scene yet, you don't see any uh, change right here. So what I'll do is I'll make our image a 3D layer as well and press P on the keyboard while this layer is selected. And I want to move this image really far back in the distance. So I'm going to set, enter something like 10,000. Now we have our image in the distance. What we need to do is of course scale it up. So click right over here, hold uh, shift on the keyboard and scale it up like so, so it keeps that aspect ratio. So now we have this, and if we're going to move around with our null, you're going to see that this is moving. So, so what I want to do here is zoom out a little bit. So what I'll do is zoom in on my image, and of course you can move to the left or the right depending on what you like to focus on, like so. Click on the stopwatch for the position of the camera control, and go all the way till the end and right click and reset these settings. So now we have this kind of simple animation. All right, so once you have something like this, of course, you're not going to see any 3D depth. The reason why is because there is nothing in front of the camera um, or there is no depth in the scene. We only have this simple image and that's where the uh, glass texture comes in. So I'm going to drag in my glass texture into my composition as well. And I'll also make this a 3D layer. 
Now we can do a few things. We can press P on the keyboard and maybe change this to like 5000. So uh, the half of the distance of our image right here and make it a little bit larger like so and just reposition this right here. Toggle the switches and change the blending mode to a screen. And you can also press T on the keyboard to lower the opacity to something like 50. So it's not that obvious. But now if you're going to move, you're already going to see some parallax effects right here. We actually want to see at the end that it's filling uh, the frame entirely. So I'm going to scale up our glass texture right here. But now you can see there is already some parallax. What I'll do is duplicate that glass texture, rotate it a little bit on the Z right here. And maybe you just want to uh, reconstruct it or take another uh, texture that you find online. Uh, just, yeah, use some variation and then press P on the keyboard again and maybe change this to like 2500. And maybe I want to keep that aspect ratio to actually look a little bit better. So what I'll do is something like this. And now if we're going to look at that animation, you're really going to see the depth of um, our scene here. And of course, this image isn't perfect right here um, because it's going very slow and it doesn't look very detailed, but it's okay for now. And another thing that you could do is add some kind of depth to field to your image to really give that sense of depth in your scene. So click on the glass texture and go to effects and go to blur and sharpen and add a camera lens blur right here. Now if we're going to increase that to something like 25, you're just going to have a blurred image right here, but you're also going to see it very subtly, um, but it's going to add, an, uh, add up in the depth right here. So pretty cool. So now we want to add a few other elements to really sell that depth effect. So what I'll do is create a new composition and I'll make this a square layer. So I'm going to make this like 200 by 200 and I'll rename this to like plus sign and I'll click OK. So right here I want to add a plus sign. So I'll go to my text tool, click over here and I'll press plus on the keyboard and then I'm going to click on my selection tool right here. Uh, go to the pen behind tool and with the pen behind tool we can actually readjust the center of our text. So I'm going to click and hold this little icon here and then hold shift and it's going to snap to the center right here. So it should do that or control. So hold control and it will snap to the center of the plus sign. So now what you can do is go over here to align. If you don't see the align tab, go to window align right here. What you can do is click on this icon and this icon that will center out our plus sign like so. Okay, so now it's up to you which font you want to use and which thickness you want to use. I'm going to use Lado Black, uh, which gives me that nice and thick um, plus sign. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to the main comp again. And what I want to do here is just add that plus sign to my scene. So right here we have it, toggle the switches and also make this a 3D layer like so. So now we can readjust the position, move it right over here and maybe duplicate it. So click on the layer and go to edit duplicate or control D on the keyboard and you can readjust it and the biggest difference that's going to make is if you're going to offset the Z position right here so pick, uh, pick the Z position just move it around uh, maybe closer to the camera and move it over here maybe even closer to the camera move it over here and there we go so now you can go ahead and add some kind of plus signs, change the rotation, change the size, change the distance and really go crazy with it. Uh, maybe you want to put this one really far in the distance like so and maybe you want to keep it over here, duplicate it again and maybe you want one, well if we zoom in a little bit we can move one a little bit more over here. Let it zoom in again a little bit and there we go. We actually don't see it anymore. <laughs> I'm a little bit too far away. Now we'll start seeing it again. Okay, so just make sure it doesn't pass the uh, 10,000. So right here we have 17,000, change that to 8,000 or so. And we can play with the scale, for example, to something like 50. So we have some smaller ones as well, like so. So now if we're going to look at this, you're really going to get a sense of that because it's actually passing the camera. We can duplicate this one, maybe move one over here and a little bit more in space right here and as you can see uh, you're really creating a nice depth right here so what I want to do is actually go to five seconds I'm going to use that uh, well I'm going to move that keyframe that we created for or null uh, which is actually the camera control I'm going to move that to five seconds so we're actually half uh, the time of what we used to have uh, on our slider 
on our slideshow. So it's going to move a little bit faster. This looks a little bit better in my opinion. I'm going to uh, keep my composition at five seconds. So I'm going to press N on the keyboard on five seconds, on a mark of five seconds. Make sure that keyframe is exactly at five seconds. And then right click over here and trim the comp to work area. So now I have this animation, really, really cool. What I wanna do here with the keyframes for the null, click on the position so both of these keyframes are selected. I'm going to right click on them, go to keyframe assistance and E. So what I want to do is I want to fly in very quickly and then I want to smooth out the animation. To do that is go to the graph editor right here by clicking on this icon and right here make sure that you're using the speed edit graph uh, right here. So select the last keyframe and I'm just going to drag this to the left. And this one I'm going to also drag entirely to the left like so. And maybe not so much to the left right here so we have a smooth curve like so. So as you can see, it's moving quickly and then slowing down like so. So really cool. Okay, I think it's time to add some text to our scene. So I'm going to pick my text tool right here, click over here and write tolerate it. There we go. Okay, so I'm also going to make this a 3D layer and now you can reposition this wherever you want. I'm also going to zero out the spacing right here and also move it a little bit more back into space. Maybe change it to a regular font and position it right over here. Maybe add cinematics to it and make this like a little bit bolder so we have some variation in there maybe this light okay so I'm using the font Lado as you can see right here pretty cool okay so just play around with your text once you're satisfied put it in 3d space press P on the keyboard and play around with EZ until you're satisfied so now we have something like this and our text is already there and that really makes it uh, a nice parallax effect okay so really cool we want to add one more element right here so I'm going to create a new composition again make this like 2000 by 2000 I'm going to make this circle click OK right click new and create a new solid layer in this composition click OK and then we go to the mask tool right here and pick our ellipse tool I'm going to double click on that ellipse tool that will make a nice circle in our composition like so and then I'll double click on that mask and hold ctrl and shift to make it a little bit smaller but still keep a circle then go to effects and presets and search for big Vegas right here and apply that to your uh, solid layer so what you want to do here is go to the blending modes and before we do that actually change the mask right here to none so we don't affect our layer itself. We just want to use our mask path for the Vegas effect right here. You can also click over here on this icon so you can actually see what's going on with the effects. I'm going to change the color to a white color and I'm going to change the hardness to one. Also uh, for the end right here, change this to one. Okay, so for the end opacity, change that to 1. And now what you can do is play with the segments and the length. So the length, I want to make it smaller. Something like so. And maybe increase uh, the segments. Make it a little bit bigger. Something like so. And there we go. So now you can see, you can play around with these things and you can get a nice circle. I'm going to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the rotation of the circle. And write something like time times 15. So what I will do is actually create an expression where the circle is going to stay and well it's going to rotate but it's not going to stop so there, there are no keyframes needed uh, but we have a nice soft uh, animation like so. Maybe I'm going to slow this down to 7 um, a little more subtle. Okay there we go. I like this kind of animation and I want to integrate this into my main composition now. So I'll go to my project manager and I'll apply the circle in my scene and change it to a 3D layer. I'm also going to move this and rotate this so I'm going to click on my rotation tool and just rotate it on the X right here so we actually get it in distance like so move it around maybe scale it up do whatever you want really just be creative and try some different things maybe press S on the keyboard to scale it even more if you want to and then toggle the switches to make it 
a screen blending mode right here so we can actually only see um, our lines right here. You can also keep it at normal actually if you go back here in the composition and click on the transparency grid right here, go to the Vegas effect, go to effect and right here we're going to use this as a transparent layer. There we go. Main comp, there we go. We have it without changing the blending mode. So depending on what you need, um, yeah, here you have the solution. So rotate it a little bit more like so, there we go. We can duplicate the, the circle as well, reposition one over here. Uh, maybe we want to rotate it a little bit more like so, and there we go, and move it up, really nice. Okay, press P on the keyboard, um, move it in this way. Also press T on the keyboard for the circles and maybe change it to 50. Same for the plus signs, press T on the keyboard, change it to 50. And maybe you want to go into the plus sign composition again, click on the text layer, press R on the keyboard and maybe uh, rotate it 45 degrees to make it more like an X uh, instead of a plus. And then you can also press T on the keyboard and hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the opacity. Maybe add like a simple wiggle expression, something like wiggle five times, like 35. Now it's going to wiggle in the uh, opacity and you're going to get a nice flicker effect like so. Really cool as well. Um, well, really cool as well. And there we go. So that's basically how to get all of these effects. So what you can do as well is create a new composition again and I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080 and right here I'm going to create a new solid layer, make it black, create a new solid layer and make this one white. Double click on the ellipse tool right here like so and subtract it, press F on the keyboard and feather the mask like so. Go back to the main comp and apply this composition to our scene and just uncheck it. We actually just want to use it as a reference for a new adjustment layer that we're going to create and go to effects, blur and sharpen and go to the camera lens blur right here. And for the blur map we're going to use that composition that we just created. Change it to something like 15. And as you are going to see is the edges are going to be blurred out now and the reason why we created that map is because they're gradually going to lower the blurriness level over uh, time, well over color that you see right here. So everything that's white is going to be completely 15%, everything that's black is 0% and everything in between is just a lower value of that same blur. So now you have some more um, kind of variation here in your scene. Another thing you can do is apply an adjustment layer and maybe apply some lids which you can find on our website by the way or maybe you want to use a nice light leak and if we're going to look for light leak right here in our transition spec that we just released we have a light leak right here so I'm actually going to use this I'm going to delete this adjustment layer I'm going to create a new solid layer actually make it black and click OK rename it to light leak maybe and we're going to apply this light leak right here Press U on the keyboard and just delete these keyframes right here and change the opacity to 100% and just as an example I'm not going to really going to dive into this effect um, because some of you might not even have it. Change some of the colors to black and as you can see right here if we change this one to a nice red color uh, we have some nice light leaks and here for the turbulence noise we also, also want to change this to 100% and change it to a multiply. There we go, and maybe change the complexity something like 5 or 3. And now if we're going to change this to a screen, there we have it. We have some nice light leaks and if we're going to do this animation here, we're going to see that uh, it's going to look pretty cool. Alright, so really cool light leaks uh, which you can get with the transition pack with the link in the description. Um, but like once you're done with your entire um, slide for, for the first one, what I do is Ctrl A to, uh, to select all of the layers right here and go to layer pre-compose this and move all the attributes in image slide 01. Click OK. And now what we want to do is create a file transition so it actually moves away. So what I will do is create a new solid layer, click OK, and just re uh, well toggle the switches if you don't see the track mat right here and just select the track mat alpha mat. And now what we can do is actually make our solid layer a little bit bigger. 
maybe go to the rotation tool with the W key on our keyboard, rotate it like so, press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch for the position, move a few seconds further away depending on your preferences, and then move it up like so. So now we have this kind of transition, so it actually moves away. And now if you're going to have like mul uh, multiple uh, compositions like so, if we're going to quickly pre-compose this as well as final image 01 for example, uh, we can duplicate this and put this one right over here next to it. And now it's going to fade into the other image like so, uh, which is really cool. So I'm going to do a quick preview so you get an idea of what I mean. All right, so that's how to create the transition. Of course, you must make sure that this layer is right here so you can actually see it from the beginning. There we go. All right, so now you know how to do it. And if you have created something special, definitely share it with the hashtag creator to creator. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you in the next one and goodbye.